Hey you guys, welcome to the Telegami Math Lab and today we are going to be doing some problem solving which means lots and lots of word problems. We are going to draw a picture and write an equation. So basically you are going to get a word problem. You are going to then draw a picture of the fractions that you're going to be using and then you're going to turn that picture into an equation and then solve it. So without further ado, let's get clicking chicken. So let's first take a look at the word problem that we're going to be working with. I have here that Steve connected a wire extension that is 3 eighths foot long to another wire that is half foot long. How long is the wire with the extension? Okay, so what is it I have to figure out? I have to figure out how long the wire is with the extension that Steve connected. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing out my fraction bars. This is going to help me determine what operation am I going to use. So I know he started off with 3 eighths of a foot, so I'm going to draw a fraction bar that is about 3 eighths. Now these are not completely accurate because I don't have the fraction bars with me, but the, you'll be getting sets of fraction bars to use at your tables, so your fraction bars, when you draw them out, should be a lot closer than what mine are. And then I'm going to draw another one and that one is half and I know half is larger than 3 so I want to make this one a little bit bigger or a lot bigger. Okay and the reason why I added it next to it is because I'm adding it onto 3 eighths. Do you notice in the equation it says that the wire was 3 eighths foot long and then to another wire that is a half foot long, right? So I have my 3 eighths, let me label this one correctly, this is 3 eighths, and then I added another half. Okay, so that's going to tell me what the operation is. 3 eighths and half. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and solve. So I'm going to write my equation. I got 3 eighths plus half. Alright, let's go ahead and solve. First thing I have to do is find my uh, least common denominator because I have to find equivalent fractions. I have to turn these into equivalent fractions. So if I do my multiples for 2 and for 8, I know that my least common denominator is going to be 8. So I'm going to go ahead, 8 and 8. And now let's turn these into equivalent fractions. 2 times what is going to give me 8? Well, that's going to be 4. So let me do this. So I'm going to times 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then down here, 8 times what equals 8? Well, that's 1. So I'm going to multiply by 1. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So let's go ahead and add 3 plus 4 equals 7. And then my denominator stays the same because I'm now working with common denominators and whenever my denominators are the same it remains the same. 8. So my answer is going to be 7 ace or the wire is now 7 ace long, 7 ace foot long. Let's take a look at another problem just so you have seen examples of the types of problems that you'll be coming across. Here I have Felix bought 5-6 pound of peanuts he ate three quarter pounds of peanuts with his friends. How much did Felix have left? Hmm, well this is a different type of question because now it's asking me how much did he have left, not how much he has total. So this is going to be a different operation. It's going to be subtracting. So how am I going to model this equation? Well, it's not much different than what you just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what Felix initially had which is 5 6. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put together fraction bars that will equal 5 6 or I'm going to find a fraction bar that is 5 6. So I'm going to draw it out. Whoops. I'm going to draw it out and let's say this is one fraction bar that is 5 6. Now like I said, you may not have a fraction bar that is 5 6 or 3 quarters. You may have to build several different types of fraction bars together 
to equal that fraction. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label this one. I'm going to call this one 5, 6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second part of the problem. He ate 3 quarters of a pound. So I'm going to draw another fraction bar. I'm going to put it underneath here. And let's say this is 3 quarter. Now this shows me subtraction. And it shows me subtraction because then this part here that's empty, this is going to be x, which is the unknown, which is how much is left over. Because think about it. Here's what he had originally. Here's what Felix, our little piglet, ate. And then here's what's left over. See how modeling can be so much easy on the mind? It helps so much. So let's go ahead and let's solve this. I'm going to go ahead and write my equation of 5, 6 minus 3 quarter or 3 fourths. Okay? All right. First things first, common denominators, right? So let's see if we can figure this out. Let's do our multiples. Let's use 6 and 4. And let's do our multiples. We got 6, 12, 18. Let's go down here to 4. We have 4, 8, 12. Up. Oh, yep, I have one we can use. There we go, 12. So 12 is going to be my new denominator. And now we do the same thing. 4 times what equals 12? Well, that's 3. So we're going to multiply. Then we go 3 times 3, and that equals 9. And now 6 times what equals 12? Well, I know that's 6 times 2 equals 12. So 5 times 2 is 10. Now I subtract. First thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to work off to the side here. You guys, I'm going to work over here because I ran out of room below. But first thing I know is that my denominators are the same. So my denominator and my answer will be 12. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract. 10 minus 9 is 1. Can I reduce? No, that's as far as I can go. So my final answer is he has 1 12th of a pound left. So today during math, as you're working independently, you're going to be working on a variety of word problems. You're going to get word problems that are going to be addition and word problems that are subtraction. It's not going to be extremely clear which operation you're going to use. That's why modeling the equation is going to be so important and really paying attention and looking for those key words within the word problem. Read it carefully, read it slowly, model accurately, and then most importantly, make sure you take your time with your work. It's those little mistakes that will screw up your entire problem. You guys know how to do this really well, so I'm confident that you can handle this assignment today. Good luck.